DIY crypto guy. It is uh, Monday evening at about 10. Uh, again, I let, a, I let a bit of time go by, uh, you know, just to kind of let things settle in the crypto space. And uh, again, some interesting things have developed that I wanted to share with you. Um, I think it's important to bring to your attention. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial, legal, nor tax advice. So in this video, I'm primarily going to focus on Ripple news. Um, I think everyone's been kind of curious as to what's been uh, happening with Ripple and the SEC lawsuit. Um, quickly, just looking at the total crypto market cap, it's you know it's dropped down to about 1.2 trillion. And my thoughts are the following, and this ties into uh, the lead into XRP news. We're going to see, I think, further um bearish trends for the entire crypto space until i'd say through the rest of this month uh, there are some key dates the the 27th and 28th um, again everything is connected um, in my opinion my research and the way things have been playing out i believe that they're going to try and drive the price of all cryptos down as low as they can so that the big money can buy in cheaper uh, big money does not want to buy expensive cryptos. They would like to buy it at a discount. And what is happening on the, on the 27th? We have the deposition of the previous SEC chairman. He will be finally uh, part of the lawsuit. And he will, I guess, be um, questioned uh, on his thoughts at the time when he was head of the SEC as to you know, was XRP or cryptos, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, are they securities um, or are they a digital asset or a digital currency? But I wanted to just quickly go, I mean, again, there's uh, numerous articles of, you know, everyone is saying that Bitcoin could could rally to these prices. I mean, we, and I'm going to get into it, but I think Bitcoin, there's a massive potential um, coming and if you notice Bitcoin has been stagnant around about the 30 to 32 thousand dollar range um, is that a stable price but getting into ripple um, I'm gonna just read this article to you uh, that came out ripple executives use the SEC commissioners recent statement to bolster their motions to dismiss yes to dismiss the case Lawyers representing Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and co-founder Chris Larson have filed a notice of supplemental authority with the court to bolster the individual motions to dismiss the case brought against them by the SEC. So here is a copy of that letter and I'm going to try and read it as quickly as I can so that you can see for yourself. I actually do my research. Um, this is from the office of Clary yeah, Stein, Steen and Hamilton. So what it just goes down, it pretty much says, you know, we write on behalf of the defendants, Bradley Garlinghouse, uh, Bradley, yeah, Brad Garlinghouse and Christian Larson in the above caption litigation. They go through pretty much to explain that the SEC does not have a case. Um, the way that they've approached this case is totally wrong. Um, and the points that they say, I'm going to read them out to you. The public statement confirms the individual defendants' arguments that there was significant regulatory uncertainty regarding when digital assets may be classified as securities by the SEC. Specifically, Commissioners Pierce and Roseman observed the following. The only certainty we see is that people have questions about how to comply with the applicable laws and regulations. There is a decided lack of clarity for market participants around the application of the securities laws to digital assets and their trading. With respect to many digital assets, the application of the Howey test is not crystal clear. Although the Commission staff has provided some guidance, the large number of factors and absence of weighing cut uh, come on cut against the clarity the guidance was intended to offer market participants have difficulty getting a lawyer to sign off that something is not a securities offering or does not implicate the securities law in this void litigated and settled commission enforcement actions have begun the co the go-to source of guidance people can study the specifics of the token offerings that become the subject of enforcement actions and take clues from particular cases however applying those clues to the effects of a completely different token offering does not necessarily produce clear answers in a nutshell i'm going to go further down and just cut straight to the these two paragraphs over here um 
Recklessness is highly unreasonable conduct that represents an extreme departure from the standards of ordinary care to the extent that the danger was n either known to the defendant, the standards of ordinary care to the extent that the danger was either known to the defendant or so obvious that the defendant must have been aware of it. After the two trials, the SEC failed to adequately plead knowledge or recklessness on the part of the individual defendants. The public statement confirms that charging the individual defendants with an offence that requires knowledge of recklessness was and is legally untenable. Plainly, it could not have been so obvious that the individual defendants must have been aware of it years ago that XRP was an investment contract with when two of the five SEC commissioners acknowledge today that the regulatory status of digital assets remains so categorized by a decided lack of clarity that the only certainty we see is that people have questions about how to comply with the applicable laws and regulations. Ripple went out of their way to ask for guidance from the SEC at the time, say, hey, if, is this a, is, is this a, is XRP a security? If it is, are we, you know, the, they looked for guidance. They looked for procedures. They asked numerous times from the SEC what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And guess what? SEC not once told them that they were doing anything wrong or illegal. So guys, in a nutshell, this is my opinion. When XRP first came out, possibly, well, I'm also going to encompass uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin and XRP. So quickly, Ethereum came out with an ICO. An ICO was a initial coin offering where they seeked investment monies from individuals, the retail, to purchase Ethereum, to invest in the Ethereum company, the network. Bitcoin, totally different. There is no company. There is no CEO. XRP, and over a period of time, digital assets can change. Maybe initially there could have been some kind of misunderstanding that XRP was a security, but over time it is clearly proven itself to be a digital asset or a digital currency. My opinion, they're going to settle. What happens once XRP settles? I'm going to read something to you guys quickly that I saw today. The last mile, and this is on ripple.com, the last mile in global payments is the movement of value from a financial institution to the end recipient. Our playbook provides the insights and opportunities to leverage your business. It's right here on ripple.com the global payment speed transparency and liquidity are critical for efficient payment processing in cross-border transactions in many regions around the world they already have established relationships guys so what does that mean buckle up uh we're going to see some crazy things we may see all cryptos dump further and we may see heavy heavy accumulation so I'm very, very bullish on Bitcoin. I'm very, very bullish on Ethereum. I'm very, very bullish on XRP. Binance, be careful of Binance. Uh, Binance International, I think they're going to try and squeeze it and close the loophole with uh, the VPN use in the United States. So if you can move your coins out, I think Qcoin um, is a good um, uh, platform that you can actually take out your coins out of Binance. So be careful of the foreign exchange uh, of the foreign trading platforms. Guys, that's it. I hope this uh, helps and provides some clarity. It's going to get really, really interesting. But I think in the end, um, things are going to pay off greatly for those of us that hold these stable coins. Cheers.